Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Raisa Lopez from Channel Sales and Marketing at IIG. We are very excited to have you with us today as we present our light manufacturing enhancement for Acumatica. AccuWork Order is certified on the price list and always current. And you can find the, the pricing as, like I said, on the newest price list. Okay, before we get started, just a little bit about us in case we haven't worked together before. We have have over 30 years experience in ERP and ISV solutions. We have successfully published 17 enhancements for Acumatica, 10 of which are certified. And two of our modules were acquired by Acumatica. That's Acumatica's point of sale and AccuGmail. We also partner with over 100 different Acumatica resellers all over the world. And we offer marketing support, support with discoveries and demos. And we also have over a thousand clients uh, that we support worldwide with our enhancements and with custom programming as well. And we are a gold Acumatica partner. And we want to welcome you to visit our website and check out tons of reviews from customers and partners as well. Okay, with that being said, I'm gonna pass you over to Alec, our Chief Solutions Architect. And I also want to invite you to type your questions in on the top right, there's a question, there's a little question chat box where you can type your questions in and we'll address them at the end of the call. And I'll stop sharing, Alec. You can start sharing your screen. Hello. Okay, Hello, Alec, we can, thank there you. you go. We can see your screen and hear you now. Thank you for joining us today. And we, as, as Risa said, we just got out of some of the screens. We just need to get back in and open up the, the right session, right webinar. So we can do our thing. Great. So, uh, we're going to go over our AccuWork Order Enhancement today. And uh, what it does, it lets you generate manufacturing work order transactions in Acumatica's distribution addition, uh, or field service for that matter, or construction. It tracks quantity on work orders and required for work orders. You have visibility with those numbers. It lets you schedule your work orders and employees on a drag and drop scheduling board. And you can create additional filters to you know, view things for the first shift, second shift, products that are released, outside processes, and so forth. And we'll we we'll have a dashboard that shows your uh, shop floor capacity and utilization by month. Some of the features that are part of the pro product are the handling of repair, full or partial disassembly transactions. Your repairs could be for customer equipment. Uh, that uh, you're doing billable or non-billable repairs. We will track schedule services for some of those repairs that we're doing your, for your customers. We'll manage phantom bills, overhead allocation, outside processing. We will actually create uh, the purchase orders to the vendor. We will create, create a transfer sales order, sending the product to the outside process and a, a sales order to, uh, transfer transaction, bringing the product back. Overhead allocation to mission QC functions. We let you specify what QC functions you need to do for a step in the manufacturing product, for the finished product that you're assembling, for the or for the components that you're going to be using to manufacture the product. We also have some process manufacturing functionality where we let you specify the components as a percentage of the batch size. We let you have multiple finished goods. So if you're making a lasagna and you're going to put it in different size jars or if you're making paint and you're gonna put it in one liter, two liter and five liter cans, we'll let you manage that and do some part tracing. So this is our dashboard. We'll show you the utilization of each one of the machine work centers for the next so many days. And we'll show you the utilization for the past 12 months. So you'll see which work center uh, is utilized. Uh, we let you manage shift and uh, from during sales orders, if you're gonna create a work order, we let you manage your uh, you know, availability and give customers an available to promise date. 
our scheduling board. So each one of these cells is a step in the manufacturing process, a rotting step, and the colors indicate the status of that. So you can move it from one work center to the other. You can make it longer. You can create multiple views to see everything for shift one, shift two, uh, uh, or, or for outside product. This is our employee dashboard. So in addition to uh, ma let you manage the uh, operations for the work centers, we also let you manage your employee schedules, you know, who is gonna do what, uh, if you assign an employee to a machine or you're entering labor. So these are work order types, as I mentioned, we do production work orders, uh, repair schedule services, disassembly and partial disassembly. So if you're harvesting parts from an equipment, you can remove parts off of it and every time you remo remove a part, uh, you know, the cost of the finished good would be reduced and the, uh, the harvested part, the partial disassembled product will get added to the stock for the price they had. Your machine codes, your statuses that you have. So here is a kit specification uh, of Acumatica. What we do, we use kit specification uh, records, but we add information to it. We add fields to it to let us manage our work orders. One of the things is a routing. So you assign a routing step what are the steps that go into the process? Now you can set up our work order where your writings are defined and linked to it, or you can have a, a, through preferences, writings be loaded and you modify it for each kid's list. You have revisions, you have uh, yield percentages, you have scrap percentages that we manage, you have options that you could define. Uh, so basically what the system does, it looks at the writing that you've defined for this. And when you can generate it, manufacturing trans work order, it will create a manufacturing transaction for each step in the routing. And it would decide uh, which transaction to load the components in using this group ID. So you create this group IDs and you link group IDs to uh, items that the components and you link this group IDs to routing steps. So the routing step that says electrical any item that is linked to the electric group would be loaded in their construction packaging. So this gives you the ability to issue every component in the very first step, very last step, or throughout the manufacturing process. You can step issue components to the manufacturing transactions. These are the options. You can define options and options could add additional components stock and non-stock and erotic step to the process. Uh, we support multiple bill of material, multiple components. So you, uh, you, in this screen, which is access from the kit specification, you'll see that that desk has this item to the high level and this item has this level, so you can have as many levels as you want to find. The good thing about it is we support Fanabil, so this could be a, a product that you manufacture or uh, put in the stock or you create a work order uh, transaction for manufacturing it using these components. And it could be set up where it always loads the item as a component, the phantom bill as a component or load this component or ask you, prompt you and ask you what you want to do. This is an example of a routing. So in here to manufacture this uh, candy cane holiday decoration, we're saying these are the steps that go into the production of it. Pull the product, assemble the frame, uh, install the ornaments and lighting and the packages. So each one of them has its duration as to you know how long it would take to manufacture that. And, and we let you specify whether you want to issue the components that are linked to this routing step uh, uh, to the, the cost of the profit finished good or you want to load them into the sales order, maybe have some options and some products that uh, you use as part of the manufacturing transaction. You want to build the customer as an option. So you can check this box and it would load those components into the sales order and invoice the customer. So the way it works out for each one of the manufacturing transactions that we have, we let you load the components. Then this manufacturing transaction has a status or one is called allocated. So once you do an allocation, we reserve the components that are in that manufacturing transaction. We create an issue transaction in Acumatica and, uh, and hold that issue transaction. So all other Acumatica programs know that no longer those components are available, whether they're lot-based, whether it's serialized, 
or just a quantity for a non-serialized item is no longer available to other Acumatica modules because a, a, a transaction is, is an issue transaction is generated. And once you're done with all the steps in the manufacturing process, all the steps defined by the routing, we will then create a kit assembly transaction and hand everything over to Acumatica and let Acumatica do its kit assembly. This is our MRP screen. So here you have the ability to see as many level dip that you've defined the uh, uh, kits and components for, bill of materials for, will go down and come back and tell you what you need to buy, what you need to you know, purchase. Uh, you can set up things like what if quantities that, that would impact this calculated demand. So this calculated demand is what's been calculated based on transactions that are in the system. Uh, you can load a what if quantity either from Excel or manually, which basically says I want to have another 100. Go ahead and tell me if I want to have another 100 days, what is the impact of it on these items demand as well as the demands on all components, whether it's one level deep or two level deeps or three level deep. Uh, you have check boxes, show items with uh, zero quantity required, meaning show me all the items uh, or show me only the items that I need to take an action on, that I need to buy or, or you know, man manufacture. Include the calculated, uh, what if in the calculated demand, use the MR EOQ information entered or only use the uh, it, what if quantity. So, and, and these fields are used to for you to create filters so maybe you do the purchasing for the batteries on the 10th of the month, on the tires on the 20th of the month, and so forth. So you, you'll be able to create different grouping of items, save them using filters, and use that to do what you need. So notice that we will show you the manufacturing trees. We'll show you the, uh, the MRP, what other transactions are here. We'll let you generate work orders, whether it's the sub-assembly or finished good, transfer sales order if the replenishment is transferred or generate a PO if you need, need to buy that item. So this is where we create an issue transaction. Uh, and we'll, if before you create the issue transaction, we'll show the quantity, the work order demand and prepare. Once you allocate the quantity to that transaction, then we'll create an issue on hold. So those inventories reserved, nobody can use them. This is our work order generation program. So you enter the item and you click on generate manufacturing transactions, you'd see notice that there's a tab called manufacturing transaction. And from there, you're able to see the different transactions that got created, but it's showing us the routing, the machine, the main machine and so forth for manufacturing. this. So this is if you're creating the work order from the menu, but you also are able to create work orders from the sales order. This is a transaction that, that got generated. All the components got loaded into the transaction 10 of that work order with lots or serialized, you can see that as well. We let you create a barcoded, a traveling traveler document, and you be, have the ability to scan the work order number, to scan the step, start and stop the labor, so it will load the labor into the transaction or start scanning the location, the serial number, and the barcode to load the items into the manufacturing transaction. This is where we're showing you how we create a work order from the sales order entry program. But we will actually show us the at this program as well. I just want to go over the PowerPoint to show us what's available. Uh, and then, you know, we will show you available to promise date as you're entering sales orders. And this is a situation where we're loading the components in the manufacturing transaction into the sales order, if it's an optional work or optional uh, work order, make to order, uh, work order with an option so you can select those and uh, any labor and material consumed in that manufacturing transaction get, can get loaded back into the sales order and work with the customer. Uh, as far as the QC, our manufacturing steps could have QC. So in this example, the second step in the routing process has a couple of QCs that uh, functions that we've set up. So we're doing these two QC functions for this step in the manufacturing process. Uh, and basically they, they got loaded in here in the work order for that manufacturing transaction. You see the QC that needs to be performed. Uh, engineering change notices, uh, orders were managed. 
uh, overhead allocations are managed. So you link overhead allocation codes to routing steps. Uh, if you're if you're using our work order module to do repairs for customer orders or your own warranted information, we will let you uh, create a work orders, track all the equipment, make and model, and so forth. Here is the QC by stock item in Acumatica that you need to perform. And notice that the kit assembly, the initial purchase of the item, or using that part as part of a kit assembly transaction, they're all QC step. Also, if you're repairing customer equipment or your own equipment, you can set up scheduled services and tell it when you need to do what. Uh, repair sales orders can also, so, so the, the way folks handle uh, repairs is they will enter a sales order transaction, either one that lets you bring product in and ship it out, or just enter the repair, create a work order, go through the option as to what repairs you need to perform, and set up the routing steps to load the component back in and invoice the customer for it. Uh, and this is where you can create a repair work order from the warranty record, the equipment record of the customer's uh, machine. We can tell the customer what you sold it for, what cost they've had. And as you click on generate work order for repairing it, ask for a routing where it's billable, non-billable, and based on that system knows what you're going to bill the customer. Uh, we also, if you're using Acumatica's project module for labor track and product issued, we will post to Acumatica's project module. Of course, all these are optional. If you wanted to post a project and a step in the project for something you need to do, something that you need to assemble before you take it out to the uh, project site, you can post the cost of that production work order manufacturing transaction to the project. Here is our uh, basically process manufacturing. Here we're manufacturing purple paint. Purple color, we're telling it that it's made up of green, orange, and yellow, and using 40% green, 50% uh, orange, 15% uh, 15 orange, and 10% white. And it knows what the quantities are. And we, on the finished good tab of that purple color, we're telling it that we typically put this in one liter, two liter, and five liter cans. So each one of these items then has its own kit specification, which may be the can, the lid, the label, and so forth. So the system knows that you need the, a one step in the manufacturing process to mix the colors to create that purple paint. And then you have the steps that, that are needed to basically put them in and put the label on, put it in the can, and do so. So the kit specification for one liter can is set up like this. You have the can, you have the cap, you can have the label. And what happens, the resulting kit assembly transaction that is generated after you uh, close your manufacturing transaction is separate kit assembly transaction for the one liter, three liter, five liter uh, for the can, the cap, and portion of the green and orange and white uh, paints that were used. So you could do this if you're making a lasagna and you're gonna put it on different size cans uh, or paint and so forth. So, so that's a quick overview PowerPoint base. So we're gonna start looking at the program. So the first thing I, I wanna show you is the this calculate quantity to produce program where basically you have the ability, as I mentioned, create purchase orders. So if I type in deck 2,500 and I ask it to show me every item, it would show me every item that that if that item and every component of it. I've told it, show me all the items regardless of whether I have a calculated demand or not. So I could see as many information that I want for that item. I could see how the system calculated the demand for any one of these items to be on hand, available on sales orders and so forth. I could see the MRP inquiries, what are the work orders and sales orders I have in the system for it. Uh, if it's an item that I'm purchasing, what are the purchase orders? I could see the manufacturing tree for it, you know, the different levels of the bill, bill of material that go into uh, manufacturing that item. If any one of these had a step, I, I would see that as well. So if I want to buy this item, all I need to do is click on it. And if the preferred vendor is set up 
in the Acumatic, I would load it. If not, I could just say go to vendor and it's say uh, the cap query demand. I change the cap query demand or enter what I want and I click on create PO. I just went ahead and created a PO. I could similarly do a transfer sales order or I could do a work order right from here as I mentioned. If I do my batteries and tires in different dates, I create different files and batches. I can import my what if quantity in here. So if I know I'm gonna have a big demand of 200 next month, I can put 200 in here and, and have it calculate, prepare data again, which will tell me not only for that item, but any component of it, at no, no matter how many level low, it would uh, uh, calculate and tell me what I need to buy. So this is a program a lot of customers use and then, you know, that brings availability to this. This is our dashboard. So this dashboard shows you that what's the capacity for each one of these work centers for the next so many days. So you can have visibility over that. Here below it, we show you the utilization of each one of these work centers for the past 12 months. We show you the work orders that you have in the system. So you can click and drill down and what items you're manufacturing. Uh, on the scheduling board, we'll show you all the manufacturing transactions that, go, that you have. You can get multiple views. Uh, views are created from here. When you click on prepare a view, you could create a view and save it. Your view could be shift one, shift two. You tell it what are the filters that you want to create for any one of these views. So you can, and by profile, which is the, the different people working on it, uh, you can have different profiles created. So someone in uh, plant one has different profile that showing different machines. Someone in plants at, uh, you know, Los Angeles has a different view than someone in New York and so forth. So each one of these, as we talked about, can be moved from one work center to the other. You can tell it that this is gonna take longer. You could click on it and open the transaction if you wanted to access that transaction and look at it. Uh, or uh, you basically can right click on it and tell it that you wanna change the status and change the status of it to whatever pending, whatever you wanna change the status to and the color would change corresponding to that. Now we do things like, as I've mentioned, we do based on the routing duration, we will manage to see what you can produce before the shift one develop, you know, defined or second shift defined. Uh, and we let you have, uh, a backup uh, work center that can do the work of the first work center. So when it's doing the auto scheduling, it will go through and, and do that. So uh, and get out of the scheduling board. We talked about the dashboard. We close some of the things that we reviewed. So this is our work order entry program. So we're gonna enter a work order here for an item that we have in the system CS4, and basically. Uh, it's going to load some information, the default revision, we manage revisions, the routing steps that we have for it. And if I click on the edit mark, it will show me what are the routing steps that go into pre creating a uh, So this is in a case where we're purchasing a case, we're buying some forms, we're cutting the form, and we're creating a case for camera for customer. And notice that these are all the steps, the durations could be different. One duration could be based on hours, one could be flat and so forth. So when the system is doing the actual, you know, scheduling of it, we'll know how long it would take to do each one of the steps. So uh, if I click on, it would now look at the uh, routing and the components and create for me the required manufacturing transactions. So if I click on manufacturing 10, step 10, you would see that the manufacturing step 10 has whatever parts it has assigned to it. So in this case, it has one, and the manufacturing step two has two products, so, and on and on. So I'm gonna take us to the kit specification program just to show you uh, the kids specification program and what, how that's set up. Notice you can have a lot of different groupings defined and just click on it here. If I click on it, I would see that item. And if I bring that item up, 
you would see that I've told it that these are the parts that I use, and that's my routing. Notice that routing steps can be loaded in here. I can, through preferences, tell it that I do not want to manage routing at the build of material level. I just want to see it there. But notice that I have my yield percentage and scrap percentage. And by the way, as part of our calculate quantity to produce, yield percentage and scrap percentages are used when you're figuring out whether you have enough components or not, or how many of the uh, subassembly you need to manufacture, because if the yield is not right or the scraps are uh, a percentage is entered, then it will uh, look for more quantities to meet the demand. So, so far, uh, we have this notice that the group ideas is purchasing, prepare, you know, so in this first, uh, we, we want to purchase this component, uh, and then, you know, we would basically, uh, yes, yeah, so, so that line purchase is linked to the routing step that is called purchase, probably in this example, what they're doing there, we're buying that before we, we send it out. So that's basically your group ID purchase. So that line gets loaded in here because we're saying that that's what we need to do, uh, you know, buy. Uh, when. So one of the things that we support is in, in a manufacturing transaction, we support the ability to create a PO to buy the part for this manufacturing transaction or create a work order if this work order is actually a sub-assembly that needs to be, if this line is a sub-assembly that needs to be manufactured. So you can uh, create a work order for this, or you can create a purchase for this. Notice that for any one of these items, uh, you, at the stock item level, you have the ability to tell it whether QC is required, and if the QC is required, what QC functions we want to perform. And this is where you have the ability to specify the kit assembly component, kit assembly itself, manufacturing transactions, and so forth, what uh, functions you need to perform. You want to charge, change. Yeah. And you could create as many of these as you want to basically tell it that you need to do your different QC functions that you need to do, whether approval is required or not, okay? So here, we're looking at transaction 10, as I mentioned, transactions are created, and then you uh, have a function called allocate components. So when you do allocate components, that's when we create the issue transaction. So, so many of this quantity, lot based or serialized, is reserved uh, for, for this manufacturing transaction, so it's not available to any other program in Acumatic. I notice you have tabs for labor, you have tabs for non-stock items, as we talked about, you can print the barcode, a traveler, and scan these steps. Now, when you click on release, then you're closing that step, you're saying, I'm, I'm done with this, and based on your setting, you can actually post to VIP in GL, which would get reversed when you create the kit assembly transaction, but you could do that. So we notice that the scheduling 10 just became closed. I go to the next one. I remove it off the hold. I'm going to take us through the steps so we will see it all the way to the uh, kit assembly transaction generation. So that now became closed. And so if any one of these steps, if any one of these routing steps had a QC function, it will be loaded in here. So I'll be doing a QC function for uh, the step. So Q, if QC functions are done for steps or QC functions are done for uh, products. So this is the screen where you do the QC function. So this uh, component for that work order uh, 45 transaction 40 you need to do so uh, you can come in here and mark it completed check that and mark it process it where it would basically complete that step and it would know that you've completed that QC process of course the other as we talked about the other way you can do your your QCs is to bring in a routing step and basically to the routing step, 
you can you have the ability to link a, a, a QC to any one of the steps if that step requires uh, some some QC functions for it you basically add it in here and tell it that operation in the process requires this QC function to be done so coming back to our transaction we're doing the transaction third transaction and then our fourth transaction and basically once you release this this is when uh, we will uh, go ahead and create the kit assembly transaction and hand everything over to Acumatica so the kit assembly would get generated for the kit lines and so forth and so on non-stock items and, and on and on so this is basically what our Acu work order does so we created work order transactions based on routing steps. We let you issue components, lot based serialized. We uh, re create an issue so everybody knows that those are not available anymore anywhere in the system. We'll post to VIP uh, if needed. And at the end, we create the kit assembly and we will let you confirm the kit assembly. If there's QC functions to be performed, we basically would say that you need to go ahead and do your QC functions. For, for this and it would mark it as QC required and load it into the QC scheme as we saw. So I'm going to go into the sales order entry, enter one or two sales uh, work orders uh, from sales order entry. So we'll see how sales orders get created. I'm sorry, how work orders are created from the sales order entry program. If you look at that candy cane collection decoration, you would see that I can do one. There's a generate work order checkbox that I can check. And basically, I have the ability to generate a work order right from here, generate work order. And the system will do. let me do the scheduling. Say, for, do I want to do an auto scheduling? Yes, or if I check that, schedule backwards from the requested date or schedule from today's date forward. It will calculate and give me an ETA that I can communicate to others. Then if I've set up any options, in this case, I've told it that this candy cane could be power-based or could be battery operated or whatever, and it would show me, let me uh, see my options. Let's see which one it says an option defined for it. Oh, none too, but yeah, if, I, if I'd done any options, it would show me here and I'll be able to select one. And based on the options selected, it would load additional items. And that's done in here, bill options. So basically, it, it lets me uh, come to the bill options screen and tell it for each one of those options selected what additional items are added and so forth. So if I uh, click on plus sign, I can say for that deck 2500 item, for that, you know, in here, battery operated, yes, that add that item, uh, such and such battery to it. So. so basically then once I enter the options, I, I select them, notice an option could be set up as being a required option. So I, I don't have a choice, I need to enter that option. Uh, or I could also do things where if I just enter another order, uh, A, B, C. I can do custom work orders where I'm basically asking the user to specify which steps. And this is the scheduling part. Again, this is optional whether you want to do scheduling or not, and it gives you a day. But here in this version of uh, this is setting that says the custom work order, I could decide which steps I want to load, uh, which steps apply to this. If I'm doing custom jobs, if I'm doing materials and so forth, I select which routing steps I wanted to generate. 
and the system will go ahead and generate those routing steps for me, create a work order transaction with the selected routing steps for me. So typically what happens in these scenarios, folks then uh, load into each manufacturing transaction generated the components from Excel and things of that sort because we allow you to load uh, material using Excel into things. So if just an engineering department has come up with custom list of parts in Excel or something, you load it into the selected steps with the instructions and so forth as to what needs to be done. We talked about uh, the ability to do outside processing. I'm going to do a work order with an outside processing step. So you see how outside processing work orders are managed. So this item has a step that is set up to be an outside process. Let's go look at the routing for it. So notice that that step is set up as an outside process. So the system, when it comes to this step in the manufacturing process, knows that it needs to create a vendor, the, uh, a PO to this vendor. And for this vendor, we tell it what the warehouse is for outside processing. So by warehouse, you define that. And what happens when you're processing that step, we'll create a transfer transaction where we would let you ship that product to that uh, vendor and we'll create a PO to that vendor. So let's kind of go do that. So the first step is straightforward. We're going to allocate the components and we're going to release it. So now when I go to my second step, notice that this outside processing tab becomes available and the system knows what are the product that it needs to send out for outside process. And here is created a transfer sales order that uh, is going to allow me to print my pick ticket to basically ship the product, this product to the, uh, to the warehouse that I've defined for that vendor or that outside processing vendor. In this case, I've told it that, but I can create a shipment and I can basically confirm it. So when you're looking at your Acumatica system, now you know you, you, these products are sitting in a warehouse, which is called outside processing vendor painting or polishing, or depending on how, many, how much product you send to any one of these uh, outside processing vendors, you can have a logical warehouse assigned to them or use one for all of them. But once you confirm shipment, system knows that that product is at the uh, vendor's location. And then probably next thing you do, you go to the PO at some point when you get the bill and you enter the PO, you do a receipt, you enter your expenses, you create an AP, then we let you bring that product back. And when you print the product back, we let you release that step in the transaction. If you try to uh, uh, release a manufacturing transaction, which is a, which is a uh, basically uh, then uh, which which is basically uh, it, it, uh, that you've not created transfer, you've not uh, confirmed the transfer. The system will tell you you still haven't even sent the product out let alone, you know, doing, you know, getting it back and on and on. So we manage this process for you, make sure that everything is processed properly and, and on and on. So, so that's, that's an outside process. Then the next thing I want to show you is to do the repairs and how we manage the repairs, what we do with the repairs. So in here it says cannot release the purchase order until the transfer receipt is created. So we basically print the transfer back from the vendor once you basically uh, uh, create the purchase, you know, confirm the purchase orders. So the next thing we wanted to do was to go in and I want to show you the equipment ROI trans transaction. This is where we let you also do some uh, work in the system. 
So this is an equipment that you, maybe you're repairing for your customer. Uh, it knows uh, what serial number it is, what part number it is, and, and you may or may not have it in stock. It's some you a product that you sold. So a lot of folks that don't necessarily need a, a field service module, they're just doing some repairs, use this and we would basically show you what the customer has paid for. If it's, or even if it's your own truck that you're maintaining, we'll show you what you paid for truck, what have been all the costs, uh, what revenue you've generated from that truck or crane. Uh, and, and, and basically what we do, we, we let you roll up revenue to this item from different modules, project, field service, and so forth. But here, if I click on generate work order, it would let me generate uh, some of these products. Uh, I already created a work order. It says a work order already exists, which I just created. So this is work order 17, 117 that is open. We generated, but the, when you create a work order for any one of this equipment, I'm gonna go to another record, maybe record 29. When I click generate work order, it lets me specify a rotting and basically based the routing lets me tell it whether you know I'm billing for it or not because the, the routing could be set up where uh, the parts and labor are loaded into the into a sales order where you're invoicing the customer if it's a billable uh, repair uh, or just basically issue it out of inventory uh, and, and and not billing anybody and in that scenario. But in both cases, we tr track information. So if I, uh, for you, so you have a customer who has visibility, you have visibility over what happens. So just, we just created this work order for that equipment so I can go to the equipment to repair. Now, the difference between a repair or a production work order that with a repair transaction, well, you have the option of adding the repair parts and labor to the cost of the finished good. So that item, you're not producing a new item, but the item that is getting repaired if it was cost a thousand dollars, now you spend five hundred dollars, uh, it would the cost it would go up by five hundred dollars, and and that truck would be ten thousand five hundred instead of ten thousand dollar because we just performed the repair. But the nice thing about it is, uh, it shows you the repair item detail, it shows you the manufacturing transaction, and you basically enter any part that you use any labor again and. The, all of this information entered basically uh, would would uh, the cost of it would get added to the cost of the product. So you're just basically doing that. So that's that's the uh, repair aspect of the system. So we believe that our system is is capable of handling good number of things for you know for uh, you know, whether it's scanning products, material shortages, multiple finished goods, scheduling boards, uh, and so forth, uh, different machines, different uh, that, that would, would let you maintain. And, and we also have things like production schedule charts where we would show you, uh, uh, we would show you uh, what the chart is like, what you know, Gantt like charts. If you get a setting that needs to be turned on, uh, if if it's set up. So I'm I'm done with our, uh, you know, uh, what I wanted to show, Raisa. If there's any questions, I can answer. Thanks, Alec. There are no questions submitted at this moment, but I will be sending a follow-up email with an attachment of this recording, and you can feel free to reply there and send any questions you think of. Okay. Yeah, no, no questions. I thought somebody was typing there. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for your time. Have a great rest of your day.